Hey, Music Calc, these are your day 106 notes. Today, we're going to be looking at a large list of different types of series, and we're going to decide, do they converge? Or I guess if they don't converge, we'll conclude that they diverge. So we're going to discover some patterns and some tests that we can use today to prove whether or not these series converge. But I'm just curious if you have any predictions. So these will all be accounted for in today's notes at some point. So take a look down this list, some maybe um, examples that we've talked about already. So maybe you remember whether or not they converge or diverge. But if not, make a prediction about them. And then at some point in the notes, we will get to um, determining whether or not these converge or diverge. So let's get right to it on the next page. So recall that for a series, how can we tell if it converges or diverges? Well, one of the things that we're gonna be looking at today are the partial sums. So it says given a series with non-negative terms, the sequence of partial sums would look like the following. So, you know, if we just had the first term, you know, there's not a very exciting sum there, but the sum of the first two terms would be A1 plus A2, sum three would be the sum of the first three terms in the series, and so on and so forth. Now, because these are non-negative terms, we know that the first sum is always going to be less than or equal to the second, the third, and then finally, by S sub n, we would have all of these inequalities. It would be an increasing sequence of terms there. So if S sub n is bounded from above, then we know that the series will converge. Okay. So if there is an upper bound that um, this limit is reaching here, then we know that the entire series there will converge, but how are we going to show this? So for something like the sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k factorial, we know that the series will look like the following. It would be one plus one over two factorial plus one over three factorial plus one over four factorial and so on and so forth. Okay, so from there, let's start taking a look at the partial sums. So the partial sums for this series would include the following, that S1 would equal just one, the first term of the series there. And we would have that S2 would equal one plus a half, sum of the first two. And then S3 would equal one plus a half plus one over three factorial, which is one sixth. And then S4 would be one plus a half plus a sixth plus I multiply that by four, one twenty-fourth. And the question is, you know, will this eventually be bounded? Okay. So when we're thinking about this nth term here, as we add on more and more subsequent terms, you know, are we approaching something that would allow me to state that yes, this is bounded from above, and we know that this series converges, because if it's not, then we'll say it diverges. Well, it turns out that we're gonna compare it to something that we are familiar with. Okay. So if we can create a comparison series that we know something about, then we would be able to determine whether or not this converges or diverges. And the comparison series we're gonna look at is the sum from n equals one to infinity of our friend one half to the n minus one. And if we look at the terms within this series, when n equals one, you're gonna get one half to the zero, which is one, but then it's gonna be plus a half, plus a half squared, so that would be a fourth, and then an eighth, and so on, and so forth. <clears throat> now, why is this a really good comparison series? We know something about the convergence of an infinite geometric series, especially whose ratio meets the criteria that it is less than one. Well, if I compare it to the series up above, I know that the series that we're trying to determine from k equals one to infinity of one over k factorial is always going to be less than the series that we're comparing to from n equals one to infinity of one half to the n minus one. And you can compare the partial sums here, okay? So if we do a comparison of those partial sums, we know that this series is always bigger than this one. And since this one converges, it actually converges exactly to two, we can therefore conclude 
that the series that we're trying to determine from k equals one to infinity of one over k factorial, therefore this also converges. And what we're using is something that we used back with improper integrals and their applications. And it's, it's basically just a comparison test here. Okay, so if we can directly compare our series to another series that we know whether or not it converges or diverges, then in this instance, we can say, yep, we know that the series in question also converges. Okay, and that summary is kind of at the top of the next page. So we're using, in the previous example, is called a comparison test. And for our comparison test here, it says if a series with no negative terms such that we have the following that one sequence is always less than or equal to the other sequence for all values of n. If the larger sequence converges, then the smaller sequence also converges. And that's what we kind of just proved when we were doing our one over k factorial example. And oops, I did a little copy paste mistake here. So you're going to have to change these sequences here. It should say, well, if the smaller sequence, which is a sub i diverges, then the larger sequence would also have to diverge. So these actually have to get switched. If you can fix that in your notes, that would be appreciated. But yeah, it, it would make sense that if the smaller one diverges, if this one's always greater than or equal to the sequence, well, that's gonna have to um, diverge as well. So when we're trying to think about which comparison series we should use, we wanna think about ones that we're pretty familiar with and you know some common ones that we know some good information about. So hopefully you can pick out that within the series here from n equals one to infinity, we wanna show that this converges. And if we're thinking about a good comparison series, let's compare this to n equals one to infinity of how about just one over three to the n? Because we know that one over three to the n will converge since it's an infinite geometric with absolute value of r less than one, right? We can easily write that as one third to the n and therefore this converges. Well, if we were to list out some partial sums, we would be able to prove that since we know the series that we're trying to find from n equals one to infinity, and by the way, these are all positive terms, which is kind of an important part of it, okay, of one over n times three to the n is always less than or equal to one over three to the n. If the larger series converges, then the smaller series has to converge as well. Okay, so since this is true and the larger one converges, we therefore conclude that the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n times three to the n will also converge by a comparison test. Okay. So there's gonna be a lot of different tests that we use throughout our series unit to be able to determine converge or diverge comparison test being one of them, okay? So if it's something that's closely related to a series that you know something about, and I think this one's a little bit easier to pick out because we notice it's a it's a value n times that infinite geometric. If we can prove and, and justify that, yes, this series is always less than or equal to the one that converges, it makes sense to set up your um, example that way to prove that the series in question does converge. But in the next example, we're trying to prove a diverge, okay? So show that the sum from n equals one to infinity for this series of one over radical n will diverge. So the terms within the series, if I plug in one for n, it's gonna be one plus one over radical two plus one over radical three and so on and so forth. So that's what the series starts to look like when expanded. And what we need to do to prove that this diverges is we need a smaller series. that diverges. Because if I have a smaller series that diverges, if this one's always bigger than the smaller series, then this one must diverge as well, okay? So let's compare to something that we haven't proven yet, but we're gonna get to in this lesson and something that we know based on, on yesterday's lesson. Let's compare to one over n. Because if we compare to one over n, what we know is that one over n is always less than one over radical n. Okay, so because that's true about these sequences and therefore the partial sums within the series, 
this is a great comparison series to choose because we know that from n equals one to infinity, one over n diverges, okay? Again, this is called the harmonic series. We'll talk about why that's the case by the end of today. So therefore, if the smaller series diverges, the one that's larger than that has to diverge as well. So therefore, the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over radical n will diverge by the comparison test. Okay, so if we're thinking about some series that we have as far as comparison purposes go, so far, what we're gonna be comparing to would be two major things. One of them being in the example above, we were comparing to geometric series that we know about their convergence or divergence. Okay, mostly converge for geometric. And then we also can compare to the harmonic series. If we have a good comparison to make, whether it's in this case, if we wanna prove diverge, the harmonic series, if there's a good connection there, we'll choose that as a comparison test, okay? So let's move on and talk about something called the integral test. Okay. So here's what the integral test states. It says, let a sub n equal some function f of n, where f of x is a continuous positive decreasing function for all values of x, where x is greater than or equal to one. Then the series, which is represented as the sum of the terms a sub n and the integral from one to infinity of f of x dx, they'll either both converge or both diverge. Okay, I'm gonna show you a visual for this in just a moment, but there are some conditions that have to be true in order for us to be able to use the integral test. We need a function f of x that we're gonna to compare to that's representative of the terms within the sequence here. It has to be continuous, positive, and decreasing for x values greater than or equal to one. Okay. So here's what I have as a, a visual for you here, okay? So what we wanna prove is that if the area under the curve from one to infinity converges, then we're gonna say that the corresponding series for the sum of the terms in the sequence a sub n, which is representative of the function values f of n, that that will also converge here, okay? So what I know is that f of two, in this example, f of two plus f of three plus f of four, that that's going to be less than the area under the curve from one to infinity of f of x dx, okay? Now notice how I haven't included f of one in that, okay? And it's because the value for f of one actually comes before we start our integral from one to infinity. So at this point, if we add on f of one to both sides, we would have the sum of the terms in that sequence of terms in f of n, f of one plus f of two plus f of three and so on, is still going to be less than f of one plus this integral. Okay. And again, the only way, reason we're separating that is that f of one comes before the area from one to infinity but adding on f of one to both sides wouldn't affect the fact that the series here, the sum of those terms is still less than this integral over here. And therefore, if this integral converges from one to infinity, then the conclusion is that the series will have to converge as well. Okay. So if this converges, adding on f of one, that constant will still converge. And therefore, the conclusion is, is that from n equals 1 to infinity of f of n, that must converge because you can see that based on the way it's sketched above, that the function is bounded above the terms that are within the series. Okay. So if this is true, that we can calculate this integral, and this is an integral that we now know how to calculate based on what we've done with improper integrals, if that converges then the series will converge as well. Um, but otherwise, if we have a case where the integral does not converge, in other words, diverges, then the series would diverge as well. So that's all the integral test was stating from the very beginning. Okay, so if we have a situation that looks maybe more like this, where the terms are bounded above the function like we have here, if the sum of the terms is always greater than the integral from one to infinity, 
if this integral diverges, then the sum of the terms will diverge as well. And again, that would be a case where the terms are bounded above or bounded below. I guess the function's bounded below. And therefore, we'll find a case that is divergent here. Okay. So we're going to put to practice the integral test right now. So we'll see some practice with how we can use the integral test to determine whether or not a series would converge or diverge. Okay, let's take a look at the example. So in number one, we have the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n squared. So in order to use the integral test to determine if it converges or diverges, let's compare it to the function f of x equals one over x squared. And what we know about one over x squared is that it is a continuous, positive and decreasing function for all x values greater than or equal to one. So it meets all the criteria that we have to check for the integral test. It has to be continuous, positive, and decreasing over that interval. And therefore what the integral test states is if the integral from one to infinity of this function right here, one over x squared dx, if this converges, then we're gonna conclude that the series would converge as well. Well, to evaluate the improper integral, we take the limit as c goes to infinity from one to c of one over x squared dx, which is something we've actually done this many, many times now at this point. So it's gonna be the limit as c goes to infinity of antiderivative is negative one over x. Plug in your upper and lower bounds. Sorry if I'm going a little fast here. Limit as c goes to infinity of negative one over c minus, that's gonna be negative one. So minus negative one becomes plus one. And therefore, we know that this integral converges from one to infinity for one over x squared. So because the integral converges, according to the integral test, the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n squared converges by the integral test. Okay. So I think what will become a, ch a challenge for us at some point in this unit is determining, well, which test makes the most sense. And it just really comes from practice as to knowing when we're going to choose the integral test, maybe versus a comparison test like we saw earlier. And there's even more tests to come beyond this. Okay. So see if you can use a very similar strategy, though. So use the integral test here to determine whether or not this converges or diverges. And I'm going to have you try this one on your own. See what you come up with. We'll go over that next time we are together in class, okay? Let's go on to the um, infamous now harmonic series and prove why we actually know that this diverges, don't we? But the best way to prove it diverges is by using the integral test. So we know that if we compare it to f of x equals one over x, which is continuous positive and decreasing when x is greater than or equal to one, if we find the integral from one to infinity of one over x dx, we'll take the limit as c goes to infinity, one to c, okay? So that would turn into the limit as c goes to infinity of antiderivative there is ln absolute value of x from one to c. So if I plug in the bounds, it's the limit as c goes to infinity of, it's gonna wind up being ln of absolute value of c, isn't it? Because minus ln of one is minus zero. And as c gets bigger and bigger, well, natural log of that value is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as well. So because this is infinite, we know that this integral diverges. And therefore, we have now just quickly proven here, even though we used it as a fact earlier on, that the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n, the harmonic series diverges by the integral test. I'm gonna use the integral symbol there. Okay, so that's a pretty quick justification for us there, right? If we have that it meets all those conditions for the integral test, continuous positive and decreasing for x greater than or equal to one, integral test shows that because the integral diverges, that means that the series will diverge as well. Okay. Which compared to the last two examples then, it kind of brings us into a summary of what we're gonna call P series here. And we've done this a little bit. If you look back at the day 103 notes, we have a very similar justification in our notes there as well, that if we're looking at something of, a, of the form, if we have a series from n equals one to infinity of one over n to the P, 
we know that when we compare this to an integral that it will converge under certain conditions. It basically converges for values of p that are greater than one. And it will diverge for values of p that are less than or equal to one. So really from now on, instead of doing the integral test every single time, if it's something easy enough, and it's of the form one over n to the p, for example, if I gave you from n equals one to infinity, one over n cubed, because that exponent where p is located is bigger than one, you can say directly that this converges by p series. So you don't have to have to go through the justification unless you forget these rules for p series here about what that exponent dictates there. But otherwise, just knowing that, hey, if the exponent's bigger than one, this will converge. But otherwise, if I gave you something like from n equals one to infinity, one over radical n, hint, hint, maybe you did that already a moment ago, um, this would definitely diverge since p is less than one. So this diverges, but also by p series. So it's something that you can use as a justification from now on if you don't want to go through the whole process of showing the integral test. We might use the integral test for more complicated cases, something that's pretty direct like this. Just compare the exponent and determine if it converges or diverges that way. And I think we'll wind up stopping here for today. There is another comparison test we're gonna look at, but we'll look at it in class tomorrow. We've already talked a little bit about limit comparison tests when trying to determine if certain integrals converged or diverged. So we're gonna make a connection to that when we talk about the limit comparison test. And then actually the last part of the notes is a summary of really actually five tests that we'll know by the end of this lesson. So let's save limit comparison for class along with the other examples we have to go over. And then next time I see you, we'll do also a quick summary of what we have here in day 106. All right, that's it for today. Have a fantastic rest of your day.